Now let us talk about whether first welfare theorem is holding under the case of perfectly discriminating monopolist. What is it that we have seen is that uh, in case of simple monopolist, it is not holding. We have seen this case uh, in the earlier recording. But in case of perfectly discriminating monopolist, let us see whether it is going to hold or not. So who is a discriminating monopolist? Perfectly discriminating monopolist. He's the one who is going to charge the different price from everyone. And he's going to charge the highest willingness to pay, right? So, and uh, when he's going to charge the highest willingness to pay, it means that he's going to extract the entire consumer surplus, right? So let me just write that. Uh, discriminating monopolist. is the one who is selling each unit of good at different price. Right. So I'm the perfectly discriminating monopolist and I'm going to sell each unit of the good to the one who is going to value it highest. So I'm going to charge the maximum willingness to pay. And in this way, I'm going to extract the entire consumer surplus out of you. So he extracts. Consumer surplus. He extracts the entire consumer surplus and he's going to sell the good to the person who's going to value it the highest. He sells the good to the person <clears throat> who values it the most. Who values it the most. That is, and uh, so if I'm going to charge you a maximum willingness to pay, then at that particular point, you'll be indifferent between buying or not buying, right? That is such a person is indifferent between buying and not buying, right? Such a person is going to be indifferent between buying and not buying. Now I'm going to make uh, an Edgeworth box in case, and in that case, I'm the monopolist and you guys are the other individual. Right, and I'm the perfectly discriminating monopolist. So just let us see how the trade is going to happen. Right, so I'm individual A and you're individual B. And this is the endowment point. So this is the origin of individual A. This guy is the origin of individual B, right? <clears throat> and uh, right, so it's going to be like this. This is my uh, indifference curve. And <clears throat> this is, let's say, your indifference curve. <clears throat> this is, let's say, your indifference curve. And both of these indifference curves are passing through the origin. So my 
your indifference curve will be moving higher in this direction and my indifference curve will be moving higher in this direction this much you know right okay now comes the interesting point for example you were sitting here at this particular point this is the amount of x which you have and this is the amount of y which you have right <clears throat> So this is the amount of x which you have. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I don't know what is an undo button in this. I'm so sorry about this. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> so this is the amount of x which you have, and this is the amount of y which you have. Now. <clears throat> if I want to sell one more uh, unit of X to you, you know, so, but I also want to keep you at the same level of indifference, at the same level of utility. Uh, so I do not want your utility to increase. Uh, so I'll be just keeping you indifferent between buying and not buying, right? So if you want to have one more unit of X, I'm going to charge you this much of Y. And I'm going to keep you at the same level of utility. This is important, beta. I am the perfectly discriminating monopolist. I will keep you at your endowment level so that you are indifferent between buying or not buying. So if even if you move from one to two in terms of X, you have lost the amount of Y and your utility has not changed. So you're indifferent between buying or not buying. So that is what I have to do. So <clears throat> let me just write that. To sell one unit of X, to be A takes delta Y, right? So I am individual A and I'm taking, I'm charging this much in terms of Y in order to give you one more unit of X, right? So A charges <clears throat> corresponding amount of Y. such that B is on its utility <clears throat> given by the endowment bundle or endowment utility. Given by the endowment bundle. Right, fair enough. So now, and till when do you think this process is going to continue? Hmm. We will see that uh, I will be charging, charging, charging you till the point, <clears throat> till the point it is beneficial for me. Huh. So I'm going to use this, just wait. Hmm. So I will be this process of giving you some amount of X and taking some amount of Y from you is going to continue till this point beta where my utility is highest right at your endowment utility. Now after this I'm not going to make anything right because uh, supposedly, if you, if uh, I want to go further beyond than this, uh, just think about it. What I'm saying is, we are not going to move beyond this particular point. Why? Because supposedly, if I want to move further till here, 
you will have to go below your endowment utility why will you go that why will you go that route you won't go i mean you would definitely want your endowment utility to be there na so this process of exchange will continue till point m where this perfectly discriminating monopolist is having the highest utility at the endowment utility right so please write this process will continue till we reach m right so the price of x is is changing so earlier one unit of x was costing me this much of y was costing you sorry this much of y then the other unit of x is costing you this much of y and so on so the price of x has kept on changing right but the only condition is that you have to be on the same indifference curve that is given by your endowment utility uh, so just write that also note that price of x in terms of y keeps changing such that b is just as well or right at his endowment utility so his utility is not changing because i am taking all the consumer surplus out of you right you are just indifferent between buying or not buying so that is the reason your utility is not changing and who is deciding this price of x just think about it so in terms of the competitive equilibrium who was the person who was deciding it who was deciding the price of x in terms of y basically your auctioneer but here in this case who is just who is deciding perfectly price discriminating monopolist is is uh, is deciding perfectly price discriminating monopolist is deciding right beta right so person b is at his endowment utility I mean, means you guys are at your endowment utility and we have found the maximum utility for perfectly price discriminant means i have been able to find that thing so this is an equilibrium and this is also pareto efficient so in case of perfectly price discriminating monopolist yes yes even though the market is not competitive market is still imperfect but the solution is pareto efficient right so but in case of uh, simple monopoly there is no pareto efficient market equilibrium let me also just write these points for you in case of simple monopoly which you did in the last recording ha huh, there is no pareto efficient market equilibrium please write in case of simple monopoly there is no pareto efficient market equilibrium right and in case of discriminating monopoly market equilibrium is pareto efficient in case of discriminating monopoly
market equilibrium is pareto efficient ha beta so this is what i wanted to do in this recording right okay in the next class we'll talk about the second welfare theorem right chalo thank you